Um, but hopefully one of these days I'll get the uh, get the piano one up, commanders up, uh, poor chaos, and then we'll get Kalequas. Uh, so tonight we have Kalequa Kael from Maui. Um, very, 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 very upper my man. Uh, very influential, very inspirational. Uh, very happy and lucky to have him here tonight. We tried a long time to get this book over here. We can answer his emails, this guy. <laughs> but he's teaching me the secret now. <laughs> no, but um, amazing, amazing EJ. Uh, I think the first time I heard him talk was back in 2009, I think. And um, since that point, I've spent many hours on YouTube watching his, his speeches, uh, seeing him in person whenever I can. And the first time I met him was in November at the uh, Kamawaya. And then um, we got to know each other a little bit through the Mauna Kea issue. So uh, very, very happy, very fortunate to have him tonight. Um, not too much you can say. So this, this guy is one of a kind. So um, without further ado, we'll bring up Kalekua Kael. Let's get into this. Ah, 
Bible. And I'm going to quote uh, where I'm coming from first. Uh, the great Malcolm X said, The greatest mistake is organizing a sleeping people. And think about that. The greatest mistake is organizing, trying to organize a sleeping people. You have to first wake them up to the humanity, to the heritage, to the culture. Then you get action. So think about that. You have to first wake them up to the humanity and our heritage, our culture. Then you get action. So that's really what my goal is right. So I'm going to go back and we look at the idea of Aloha'ina Oyakipo, which is a term which is, you know, not a term that was made up from it, it's an older term. But just using the framework of that meaning, the Aloha, to have love, compassion, the undying, you know, the love that a parent has for a child, or a grandparent for his mo'opuna. Yeah. This love you have for this place. You have compassion, you have pity. You have, you're willing to share based upon this, this truth. Yeah. I didn't know where I am. This land that we live on, this land that we walk upon, they are kula'i. You know, as the great Uncle Barley Kanakori once, everybody, great lesson, he told me, you know, Kalikwa, wherever you walk upon this land, you walk upon the evil <coughs> of your ancestors. So we always at home. Everywhere we walk, we walk upon them. And whatever we eat from the ground, we eat from them. When we return, we become them. And hence, this is a continual cycle forever. That is our relationship that we have to this place. And of course, the term poetical, to be sincere, to be truthful, to be honest. That's a very powerful meaning. Aloha in the And really what we see going on today is Aloha in the It's based upon love. It's based upon his knowledge of this place. And what do you say? I was telling people, you know, for our people, the Lamui Kanaka, we know. Our Ivi has been there, our Kupuna has been there, that's us. But I also always tell the, the non Kanaka who are here, who live amongst us, part of our families, and their grandchildren, and their Ivi is going to be in the ground with our school. And 20 generations from now, their Ivi, my Ivi, and our kids, and our their kids will be all on this ground too. So in the end, we all have the same goals we should have, we should have, for this place. Because if you truly love this place, then you always do the work what's the best for this place. Oh. And the best for the people. Oh. And the best for the future generation. Not for your back pocket in your checkbook. See, I don't need to know more checkbook on them. It's not about bank accounts. That's what kind of truth. Very simple truth. They're going to get way people. Based on being honest, truthful. And honesty and truth. Now that I have the line, Wa Pau Ko Wa Pau which is taken from a, a, a melody that was written, entitled, Aloha Aino O Ye Ivo. Written by uh, Mrs. Um, oh, my brain now is. Shucks. I'm going to come to you soon anyway. Uh, but a good friend, from Maui anyway, but a good friend of mine, Pulamu uh, Kali, actually put this to, uh, to a song. The line in the song goes something like this. Kua payo no kapono kalahui o Hawaii. You will fight the struggle for what is right. Now we learn. My naliki, my nosi. Kua payo no kapono kalahui o Hawaii. My naliki kalahui o kahi o Hawaii. Anape ko ikai ka no kahui aloha. Ahauli my kalani do kapono o Hawaii. Where you 
don't know where you were from or what you're doing today. You just say, no, I just ha ha po eh, just, you're just groping the dark, you're just hoping for the best. And I don't like that. I believe, and I understand, and I know we come from very educated people. Because educated people, we know, will have an educated future. Yeah, so I'm gonna, that's basically my my malako. I'll be trying to drive to tonight. So I'm gonna move very quickly, and I'm sorry, I can't really go through everything all the time, but we're gonna move real quickly. So man, if she if she uh, you know let me shut up and see it, I guess I gotta move on. <laughs> but I'm gonna always quote, and I always use this quote from the great Maori idol, the great Navigator. It's philosophy. To navigate, you must be brave. You gotta be what? Brave. brave. Say it again. Brave. brave. You gotta say, what is brave? Brave is it? I don't scared nothing. That's stupidity. <laughs> <laughs> brave is. Oh, maybe I'm worried. I'm gonna be cautious. But I will find something deeper within me to do whatever necessary to do. See, that's bravery. That's courage. Go. Be bold. You must be brave. And to be brave, you must remember. You gotta do what? Remember. remember. Not guess. Remember. If I have courage, it is because I have remembered the teachings of my ancestors. That's what you're gonna do tonight. I want us to be brave. And I see he's guiding us. Wants to be brave. We gotta do what again? Remember. Remember. Because the goal is, like Papa, we're gonna go on this journey. Like you said, we're gonna get on our canoe. We're gonna move on this canoe. And I don't know about you, but when I go on that canoe, I like make sure they go in the hills. And I just want to say, ah, uh, that guy look good. You know how bad, okay? You know, oh. Okay, you go, oh.
where they are and what they are. Most important, history tells our people where they still must go, what they still must be. The relationship of history to the people is the same as the relationship of mother to a child. So the key of the remembering it is understanding our history. So once you understand your history, you start to think in a very different political and cultural way. Okay. So the role of what's called a narrative, and this is politics. Politics is like a story. What is the people? What is our people's story? When I was going through high school, all in high school, modern history of why? Read the page. Oh, so-called overthrow. The Marines landed. The Queen didn't cry. Next page. That was it. That was the history learned. That was all. That was a particular narrative. You know why it's locked could be speaking a foreign language. All these folks, they had me So we were told the dirty gas again. It should be good for you guys. You should be happy to be the dirty gas. Could it be worse? So the narrative, when you thought it, all people's narrative is story. What is our people's story? I'll give you an example. Many years ago, I got sent to a kind of prestigious, small, kind of rich school up in Washington. We go up there, I show up there, you know, I got maybe about 100 people, but maybe like it's still bigger. A bunch of points in the front, and I go on stage, and I ask this question. The first question I come up, and I say, who discovered Hawaii? <laughs> Big, handsome, Hawaiian guy stands up. <laughs> Captain Cook, 1778. <laughs> what school you graduated from? How many, how many, how
can we, you know, discover it? Then a story comes, comes, the Nina, the Pinta, the Santa Maria. I remember, I was talking about three G's, God, gold, and glory. That's what he did. That's what he got told. That's the dirty water again. He discovered the world. He didn't discover the freaking world. But he wasn't even the first European to come across. He was a great person. Now, <laughs> and I have to read yourself. And we know this guy did De Las Casas. We know De Las Casas. You can actually read one of the, the uh, I don't know what you call it, like a uh, priest, I guess, who went along with the confiscated words. The Spanish are so proud of what they did. You can actually see this stuff. This stuff painting. Depicting how they treated the native Taino and the Arab people of the Caribbeans. And you know they have a holiday for this guy, Columbus? And you can see what's going on. You can find all those pictures. When he, when he refused to convert, cut off the hands, the ears, the women, they would hang the women by the hair. And if the hair wasn't long enough, they would, they would hang the child. They would feed the children to the man eating dogs. That's history. I'm not making this stuff up. So you can speak of Columbus. He's also own words. Look at this. This is Columbus' own words. The inhabitants are so tractable, so peaceable. So if they peaceable, what can I say about him? They are so free with their possessions. If they're free with their possessions, what does it say about him? When you ask for something, they never say no. To the contrary, they offer to share with anyone. They are great intelligence. <coughs> if you, your majesties do wish, all can be carried to Spain or made slaves. On their island. See, when he went, they realized they never had the gold that they thought they had. What's the next best thing? Slaves. So began the transatlantic slave trade was begun during the time of Columbus. So he thanked Columbus for all the millions of lives that were destroyed and slaves were brought over. That's Columbus. So happy Columbus Day. Thanks for the We have other pilgrims. So I don't have time to go. Let me just say this. They weren't eating pumpkin pie and turkey. <laughs> you should go read and see what they were eating. <laughs> they didn't eat chata. They were hungry. They were starving. And thank the natives of that area who took them in. It was so pretty on these guys who were living like animals. Taught them how to fish, how to farm. Well, sadly, 20 years later, what do you think the descendants of the early pilgrims did to the same native people? They killed them off. All the inhabitants remaining were largely peacock women and children and older men. Mason ordered that the employer to be set on fire. Justifying his conduct later, Mason declared that the attack against the peacock was an act of a God who laughed his enemies and the enemies of his people to score and making the peacock as a fiery oven. Thus did the Lord judge among the heathen, filling with dead bodies. Mason insisted that any peacock attempting to escape the flames should be killed. Of the estimated 600 to 700 peacock residents at Mystic that day, only seven survived. That's the pilgrims. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody, in November. <laughs> so there it was. They speak the truth. Malcolm X also said, history is a people's memory. And without a memory, Man is devoted to the Lord animals. See, that's all peoples have history. But when they teach you, you know more history, why are they trying to do to you? Or your whole life, uh, you don't really have sacred places. Hi. We have. And you guys, well, it's the idea of humanity. See, I would argue all humans have history. All humans have sacred places. In order to be fully human, you got to have the ability for yourself to determine your history and your sacred places. It's a core fundamental element of all peoples. And to deny that it is for someone to treat you as a Lord Adam. So we're going to jump right to the Kumulipo now. So we're going to look at what is our narrative? How do I know you? Where does it come from? A bunch of young guys just hanging up in uh, Mauna Kea just came up with this terminology and this idea. Of course not. It's an ancient idea. They come from our kupuna. Okay, I think that's the first way. So, when you heard me perform earlier, that was the first 
Pessoal da Comunipo, você vai morrer o clipe. Fica na costa do Grava, bem citado no estéreo do Comunipo. Quem é Comunipo? É Como meaning the source, the beginning, the foundation. Como? Libra, darkness. And the Comunipo, first of all, it's a song, it's a poem. And what he tries to explain, of course, is how do we, how do the Kupuna see ourselves? Where do we come from? But the first step to history and humanity is answering the question who are we as a people? Where do we begin? And our Kupuna were geniuses, and we understand this. I want to talk about the Kupuna clause. He tries to present in his poetic sentence, his idea, his song, his idea of where we come from. Yeah. To make sense, to make coherence of something that's very difficult to explain. Of course, as they say, the way you explain something that's very difficult to explain is through poetry. And that's really what the Kumunik is a song, it's a poem. But within the poetry, you see, there's history, there's genealogy, there's science. What does the Kumunik explain? Again, it's the Kumunik. How does everything happen? Just happens. There's a whole explanation. How does it begin? It begins. Oh, it's just smart. <laughs> Tell me how it began. It just began. Who's going to find those items? Scientists talk about the Big Bang. Singularity. And trying to find them. And to my point, that's, what, that's part of what the PMP question is about. This need to answer this question a particular way. It also, sorry, it also provides a uh, theory of evolution. Yeah. Which is important. What do you guys understand? Listen to this. It wasn't until the 1800s that the great star of Europe, of science, by the name of who? Who's the great hero of science in Europe? Talk about natural selection and evolution. Oh. Darwin. 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 Pretty smart guy. <laughs> but in our kubuna, we already understood that. We never learned from so Darwin is a great science hero. Sorry, brother. It was after our kubuna. <laughs> That's the truth. Our people understood evolution. We understood the natural order of simple life forms to complex life forms. We didn't learn this from Darwin. We already understood this as a people. That is science. That's science. It also provides a genealogy. It's a song. It's also a prayer to sanctify this Ali. Yeah? But as a genealogy, I want you guys to understand this. As we look at the this idea of this genealogy, what does it do? Why do we have genealogy as a people? Yeah. Let me just read some lines. This idea of Kauna. So what do you know the It's not like you can. An exact understanding. It's full of these multiple meanings and hidden meanings. It's part of the poetry, not the beauty. It has 16 time periods, 16 wa. Seven po, eight and nine hour. But the idea from primordial darkness, conception of the cosmos, story of creation, and the evolution of Hawaii, all the Hawaiians. You know, historically, it was first put into writing. First, a line of Luna by Malo and Tomokuiki as a genealogical form. And then later, when Kalakao comes to be elected, he's later put in, published as the Kumunipo. Yeah, the very Kumunipo. Now, the first language was translated out of Hawaii to was in English. It was German. Because we remember that Germany was where the science and engineering was happening in the 1800s. And they were very, very interested in how they had to in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, understanding scientific principles that they just figured out. <laughs> so, this idea that we come from people, our culture, is again science. That's the dirty water again. That's the dirty water. That's not our culture. In fact, the first time it was translated to English was by Queen Yuko Kalani while she was locked up in the Yolani Palace. Think about that. And why? It's her while she's locked up, she starts to translate this into English. But all the nines of the Kumanipo. Okay, I'll be coming, leave her at the old Nuwa. Okay, I'll be coming. Oh, heaven. Opening 
ninth. Ukiyo, Rudo. Rudo means time. The time, epoch time. Rudo is the same word for space. Oh. Oh is also the word for like a current. Especially quantity, you guys can see the current, and you can see the like, oh. So think about that. The word out has this meaning of time, space, and out. Time, space, time, space. Where have you heard that before? <laughs> Physics, from who? <coughs> who uses that term? Time, space. Who's that? Heard somebody say, oh? Einstein. <laughs> it's my guy, you gotta agree. <laughs> <laughs> Our component of the spirit is going to reality. <laughs> okay, I'll be, but I want to get, it's not just time and space, but you're adding the flow we do. Which is the idea, time and space moves. Wow! Unreal! <laughs> and all right, cultures against science, they say. That's the dirty water, yeah? Okay, I'll be Kahuli. Vela Kahulua. Vela heats up. Time and space is moving. What happens? It creates friction. In fact, yes, physical scientists. Everything you see, the table, this flag, the wall, this microphone, our bodies is all made of what? Friction is what? Energy. I'm not making this stuff up. Energy. The foundation of everything is energy. <laughs> really good! And they say we have nice sights. Okay, I'll be Kahuni Lode Kalani. It's an interesting idea. Lode Kalani. Kalani, that it happens. Lode is when you turn something inside out. And this idea is something reversed in the sky. I mean, that's heavy poetry. This idea is something was reversed, something that turned inside out. And what was in, what was out, was out, was in. When you actually read some of the explanations, cosmology, cosmology explanation of the universe, how things begin, this is part of the explanations. And my point is, Hawaiians are trying to explain this in a poetic fashion. But they knew something. It also says this, we as the human beings, we end up the very last creatures that come out of the Kumoniko, we the end. But where do we be in as the Lama Where do we be in as Hawaiians? Yeah? 1 AD? 1778? 5000 BC? When did we stop? At the beginning of everything! Talk about what genealogy, huh? Yeah. 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 Hawaii, it's not just about where humans begin, but we go to the beginning where the stars begin. In our genealogy, we are descendants of everything in front of us to the beginning of time itself. So our consciousness as a people, such as our, our kupunas, understood this. We didn't try to become ladies. <laughs> when we talk the story, we talk from the beginning of everything. That's our genealogy, our mobile flow how. That's a particular consciousness. It's a particular way of seeing who you are as a people. So the story is in the place, everything around us is what to us? They're ancestral. They're all familiar. We are connected to everything around us. And the, the one thing I always tell my, my, my students, when you get creation, things around, I think of banana. How much percentage DNA does a banana have with humans? Anybody? DNA, or banana and humans? 50. Well, guess, 50. Actually, 70 or 70 percent. Think about that. A banana and a human being, genetically, over 70 percent share the same DNA. So in our kupuna, when they say our mountains and the trees and those plants are our kupuna, they're not making this stuff up. Even science will tell you that. We all descend and all made up of the same physical elements that define the universe. My good friend said, we just fancy start us put together with some soul. That's who we are as humans. That's all we are. The same elements again, you get a, you get a banana. 
Ez Kazincz Dorfna, and when the, when the first life forms happen on this planet here, the Kukuna say, the first life form, they talk about where does life begin? Where does it begin? In the ocean. Who says that to me? Uh, right, the scientists say the same thing. We didn't have to learn that. We understood life began. The simple invertebrates come from the ocean first. That's why you look at when they went up in storm, there's a bars, they bars, they get that, that rover thing up there. What are they looking for up there? What are they looking for? How come? Life begins with water. Really smart, I got a And they say, we're, we're not even science. Now, the different life forms come up. Oh, can you believe? Oh, can you believe? Oh, can you Male for the narrow stream. The origin is power. It's kind of power. Forces in a narrow kind of channel. Oh, can you believe? Oh, can And female power is feminine power. It's kind of seems like a broad woman, the broad stream. Now, it's not saying one is stronger than the other. It's trying to express that you have this male power. You have kind of female essence. What happens when you put male and female together? Your life. But what's the foundation of the life? Water. Oh, can you write me? Oh, you This is all in the first chapter. I'm just gonna make you thumbs up. It also says this type form comes forward. I'm not gonna run away. I'm not gonna get you. Come on, run away. I'm not gonna get you. Oh, hey, come on, hey, come on, hey, come on. Oh, yeah, come on, hey, come on. Ah, wait, come on, come on, come on. Is the one that enters. Aoi Kumukanaka, meaning no. Humans, we don't enter. Fortune, different interpretations. One is that in this time period, it's only Akua, it's the divine that's here. Humans, we never show up on a scene yet. The other interpretation is that this is said that each life form comes forward. Meaning that when each life form comes forward, what is in each life form? Aku itself, it's a divine itself. Each life form has a divinity in it. Not us guys, to be the Kanaka. Yeah, we don't have the kind of creative force. That's what makes us different in God's. Akua is in each life form. Now look at it. It doesn't really give you the name of the Akua. So that's not what you do. Who goes in? The Akua. That's in there. This is from our Kukura. So what does it say about all life forms around us? <laughs> Everything around us has godliness and divinities. So let's look at a kukuna when they walk out to cut a tree. They just walk into cut a tree. They saw that tree is this living entity, as a divine, something divine. So all life is sacred. That's not something we're making up today in 2015. This is lessons that come from a kukuna. Pretty wise people. And it's our narrative. Now the very last part of the chat. Oh, hey, come here, who have I? Yeah, who are they? Now, come here, now, come here. Okay, come here, who have I? The God come here, this male essence, this male power. And what is a who have I? Who have I? Oh, that's the. Well, this might be the bottom of the way. But all time was like the board. If you know what the board looks like, it's a phallic symbol. It's a phallic symbol. Okay, Kane, who have I? Ah, Kuakena, that's God. But the counter, of course, is think about how life is created. When you get one seed, like, you know, I throw a seed on the cement. Not grow. But a seed put in the right environment soil, some water. What happens to a seed? What, what is that power that allowed that seed to go from a seed to life? Ah, to a get nothing. That's like, how much I explain life itself, that which brings life. That's the divine. There's a godness that everything that comes about. Wow, what a terrific worldview. <clears throat> a power. A tree isn't just a tree that will cut down, a tree has its own. If 
infinity. Now, it doesn't say we shouldn't cut down trees, but it tells me as human beings, how should we look at the environment? How should we look at a tree? We better think twice about it. We better make sure that's the tree you want. Not a cut down a apple and a down or a cut down a tree. See, this is, this is how we look at the environment in a very different way. Not for just something to dominate, but something to use. And when we use, we make sure it's for the right purposes. Okay. Now, the end of the first seven chapters, the seven law, the line of, oh, no. The word Paul means it's dark. But Paul is also the time and space of you know, but we cannot really see. Now, as I was taught, if Paul isn't like necessary, something's way over there or something's way in the past. The Paul is in the now. The Paul is that which you cannot see. See, as human beings, we have limitations. We can see light, but I don't think any of us can see electromagnetic fields. There they are. And there are other kinds of waves and energies that are all around us that we cannot see. But just because we cannot see doesn't mean it's not there. So we're going to explain this, this, this which we cannot know and see. That's Paul also. But one of the things he talks about is this divine time. Oh no. But I put that sounds together. Oh no. Oh no. At the end of each seven chapter, the first chapter, how is everything? It's all good. It's all good. It's all in balance. All how it's supposed to be, the natural order of things. We're going to see it's going to change there on the Okay, move, move here. We're going to attack this. Move it on. Walk a second law. We have the swimmers. Now come on, the fish like animals that appear. Hana kumano, hana kumano, ikai la ho. So these are the creatures that swim. They appear in the second chapter. At the end of the second chapter, the very last line is. Personalities are real. These creatures are developing. 
There's evolution occurring. In the sixth one, you have all the Gihonda like creatures. Here they go, here they go, here they go, here they go, In the seventh one, here you come up, here you come up, here you here you are. And yet the dog is in this part of the shadow that appears. But what do you think about this? Okay, so you have the pig, the rat, the dog. I give you a little hint. In the eighth wall, the human is going to appear. Now at the very end of the seventh wall, you have the bat, bat, the bat. You say, what is the bat going to come up before a human's wall? This is poetry, imagery. A bat, we think about a bat. How do the bat usually hang out? Plus what? So what the hell does a bat hanging outside of have to do with the birth of a human? Or you can put an email there. What happens? Right before a child is born, what's the sign? The sign of child is going to be born. He said it's going to head down. This is imagery, poetry. Then you know, a child is going to be born. And we look at that also. Pig, rat, dog, and human. Well, this is part of evolution also. Pigs are one of the first creatures to be so-called domesticated. But where do you find pigs? Pigs are running around, and then they will start to kind of feed them, and you start to domesticate. What about rats? What does rats have to do with humans? Where do you find rats? In your house. <laughs> where are humans have gone in civilization? Civilization. And the canoes. Where is the rat? Rats have developed along the road. And of course, the dog is a pretty easy one. That man's best friend. Yeah. Sometimes love the dog so much, the dog even sleep in their bed again. <laughs> Get shoes, eat on the table. <laughs> That's how close they are. <laughs> but this is the idea. This is humanity being developed also. <laughs> At the end of the second war, oh no. Everything's good. Okay. Now. Eight war, yes? Ah, no. So in the eighth wall, you have the first human. And now when the first human comes out, it's wow. The light is on. But what, happens, what happens when humans come on the scene? Everything is wow. What happens now? That was the bottom.
And it says, you have this woman, her name is Lucky Lucky. She's the first human. But in the Hawaiian version, as I was taught, it's not, in the Hawaiian TV, you never have the first human. Like, you know, you have, you have gorillas and monkeys, and they want time to just have a human being. In the Hawaiian thing, it, oh, Hawaiian so smart. It's not saying you never had creatures that look exactly like us. Physical. But at some point in the development, wow, meaning what? Wow, the light went on. See, that's really what makes us different from the so-called monkeys. You don't get stuck with this missing link kind of thing, or trying to find this, you know. But in the Hawaiian story, what you're trying to tell us, there's something. The Hawaiians look at there's a spiritual, there's a there's some kind of psychological development that's actually what makes us human. When you look at us, they say, when you look at a dog, does a dog know that there's such a thing as last week? Does the dog think, I wonder what I'm gonna do tomorrow? <laughs> Humans can't. There's something about us that's different. And so there's a, this is a story. Lucky Lucky is said to be the first human. Beautiful person, and she lives in a place called Nalawaya. Ancient land, all of white. So we come from this ancient place called all of white. It's an interesting part of the story. From the heavens above is Keli Vahilani. Keli, the ribs open the heavens. Keli Vahilani, he looks down upon this beautiful creature in it. Ooh. They go spend some time with her. And he looks down, Keli Lava, he go by Lava. And they, of course, join together. And children are born from this union. Wow. Part of our genealogy comes not only from this place, but from where? The sky above. So it's kind of saying there's some kind of inter something happened. That's one of the reasons why Neil and Yah are different. And you look at the story, the first child is born, his name is Kiki. And a human being. But the word Kiki in Hawaii, the same as Kiki. What is the key? An image. Interesting name for a child. If you're the first child, we'll name you image. And you're human. The second child, we're going to name you Kari, which means man. Thanks for going on And you're not cool. So the first child is named image, and he's human. He's a man. The second child is named man, and he's a god. See, bring image of who? Image of what? Now, image is key. It doesn't necessarily mean a physical image. Too easy. So, part of our nature is this image of Kelly Ibahilani. That's in our stories. And then after Kani, you have Kani. But when you look at the word, it's like this drama of, well, what are humans? Why are, who are we? Sometimes we think we're gods. We act like gods. See, that's our arrogance. But the Kumuni was telling us, we're not gods. Get over it. You may think you are, but you're not. It's part of our arrogance as these beings. So for me, this is a very important lesson for all of us today. You know, think about things that are being done. For whose purposes, for whose benefit.
prior to how long nakalaw ka pa rin, of course, the land is known. But it's important to analyze it. It's narrative. The world is shifting is the land. Then comes the cow. The food. Then comes the human. But think about the logic. The human was going to have a human one first. What's the problem with that? What the hell are we going to eat? I want to say, Han now, 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 Han we may disappear as human beings, but this place pretty much is going to stay here. But whatever we do to this place, it only destroys us. That's a pretty important worldview. So, yeah, uh, sorry. No more enough time. But these are all different Kawaii cosmogenies. And if you're unfamiliar with any of these, go read with you. All these stories have lessons. All these stories have lessons from our Kupuna to teach us how we should live as a people here. And what's going to make us live on. <laughs> but let me stop here. If I, anyway, this is our famous saying of Pastor Divo Divo. I said, Now I hope it's not only okay, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you. As the story goes, Livo Livo was being trained by this missionary who had come to teach Livo Livo to knowledge of the world. Mm. And all the stories were kind of brought the globe to show that the earth was really round. So Livo Livo, do you know the earth was round? He basically said, this character trying to teach me this stuff for <laughs> Who can deny his intelligence? It's a role that's already been understood by, by my ancestors. Anyways, he already realized it. This joker trying to teach me something I already knew. Not that I knew, but my ancestors already knew. We already know much as of how we should relate to this place. See, that's, that's something we already understand. Yeah, we don't have to learn from Darwin to understand this. We don't have to learn certain things from certain so-called scientists who tell us how life begins. Back to my alarm. So I rush into all this stuff here, but can I help? That's what I, you know. Yeah. Right uh, now. Okay, so it brings me to kind of context. So we have a little bit of understanding of the past, who we are. Our idea and our relationship to this place isn't something we just figured out today. This is an intelligence that comes from us from the ancient past. Having a scientific view of the world is nothing new. It's something that we carry by Kupuna. How the heck did we get in the first place? This is part of who we are. This is part of our it's our DNA. It's no, um, you know, by chance. We look at our Kupuna. Let me just go short. Sorry. When you look at how our Kupuna got it, we understand world history. Yeah. As they say, you know, 80,000 years ago, suppose the first people moved out of Kupuna in Africa. <coughs> Genetic scientific stories, right? And they come across and they come down south. And they come to Southeast Asia and they end up in an area just uh, north of Australia, that area. Then we had a lot of land bridges, so they're able to move a lot easier. Those are the first people to move out of Africa, <coughs> moving to them. And then about 10,000 years ago, 12,000 years ago, they say, the last great migration out of Africa moves out. And they move a little bit north, and they go up towards uh, what we call it, Nepal in that area. Yeah? Up above, uh, through China, through Taiwan. And they jump off of Taiwan, and they end up in the same area, in Southeast Asia. <coughs> and they get together. And these become the ancestors, or they become the first sailors who leave, and they go out into what becomes Polynesia. But 3,500 years ago, Samoa, Tonga, Fiji area. And they did have about a thousand years, and they developed this ancient Polynesian culture there. 
But then about 2,000 years ago, these same people start to advance and move across the Russia Pacific. The greatest sailors and navigators ever. And they, they come across all the Pacific. In fact, even today, science is that they can actually reach across to the Americas. That's genetics right now. That's what they look at. They're trying to figure out how does Polynesian DNA end up in the Americas? Oh, man, everywhere. Our Cooper the way we are. Everywhere. And I always tell this story. You know, when, when our people were sailing these seas, the Europeans had to tell us, well, you was know, you know, the savage, I'm scientist. No, they were living in caves when our people were sailing across the seas. That's the truth. We don't come from people who are, are fearful. We came from people who could adapt to any environment. We came from people who were very innovative. You know, as I was teased by, you know, the sun went and told me friends all the time. You know, we wasn't the one that was sleeping when the canoe left. Shh, we're down the skies, be quiet. We took off. We all passed it. We all found the same peoples. But the most remote place in the world, we landed here. Not by hanging on logs and just kind of drifting along. Purposeful, voyaging, we were the astronauts of our time. Again, we come from the astronauts. We, that's part of our DNA. And they come to Hawaii, this place in Hawaii. And when you look at it, understand Hawaii, there's no place in the world that has diversity of landscapes to define in Hawaii. From the top of Mount Akea, glacial areas, to the Kau Desert, to forests like Mana Elwa. <laughs> Gotta jump to Maui too. <laughs> To the cold forests of South Maui, to the wetlands of Kelia, our kupuna adapted to all these different environments. Maka to Makai. Now it's very different from other people. Most other people around the world, when they went into a place, grasslands, for example, they thought it was just grasslands. But look at where we came. See, that's part of our nature. We can adapt to anything. That's part of who we are. We naturally adapt. And in order to adapt, you have to innovate. So we come from that kind of thinking, you see. So this idea somehow that Hawaiians are backwards and we stuck in all, there's that dirty water again. That's the dirty water. Because we don't. We come from peoples. Again, we're very scientific minded, very innovative, very adaptive. We land this place, and we create this beautiful, beautiful society. A lot of homeless we had back then. A lot of people starving back then. And they call us savages. The Captain Luke, yeah, he came and, oh, how is this? In fact, the Captain Luke can read, especially Kwana, in fact. They were astounding. When they looked at Kona, they never saw a place as farmed and as planted anywhere in the world. The greatest Hulu forest in the Malta area. Taro, sweet potato, farmlands. They never saw a place that wasn't planted. There was no place in the world that they saw as planted like Kona. That's the truth. That's our history. Now, they call us savages. But the joke is that at least we used to eat every day. <laughs> you savage? <laughs> oh yeah, we must have been savages by right? drinking the dirty water again. Yeah? Well, politics of today is one of the important words of which my sayings are put ahead. Yali no kiri, ikikanata. We look at politics today, Aloha Kaino, Oyeki Otuhe, the Ali is no Kiali Kikanaka. And Ali is the Ali because of the people. The people make the Ali. See, the Holy World tells us, you know, all right, you guys just gotta give a leader. You give a leader, everybody follow. Oh, right. Our Kupuna tells us, don't look for a leader. It's the people. You gotta serve your community. 
That's the politics. No look for a leader. That's the how we grow people. Our politics is we feed and house our people. What do you say I would say? If you're not talking about housing the people, feeding the people, educating the people, you're only confusing the people. <laughs> <laughs> Sign your name here in this paper. <laughs> Part of the station. Sign your name. That's it. Sign my name. Do we give a nation? We, the people, are the nation. Politics of every one of us, all of us, have a role to play. That's the point. Yali no kiali, ike kanata. So this is the kind of wisdom we gotta remember who we are. You know, we don't have to look to Thomas Jefferson to lead us and tell us how things need to be. We have our own inspiration. Yeah, so let's serve the people. Things also, integrity, to me is most important as a people. You know? Right, the three things, karma na ho karma na ho lana, and aloha. We gotta have faith. Yeah, we gotta be based upon this more ego, it's true. Genuine. We gotta provide the next generation hope, mana ho lana. Go be even there. That's what's the most important, is aloha. That's the three things for integrity. It's a lesson, it's very simple. There's nothing about how much the bank account or entitlements. I mean, those are the three keys, the three pillars. And most of it, I look at what's happening today. You know, our secret weapon is the bottom line is that we don't have a choice. The road of assimilation is dead to us. If our only hope is to assimilate, be a some kind of t-shirt nation, sign your name and join me up. Hey! <laughs> we did. We did. We won. That's it. But the secret weapon is we don't have to, we don't have a choice. See that question on the key, I was laughing, I thought that. Well we're gonna lose anyway. What what is there to lose? But your own humanity.
That's a commitment. That's the commitment. That's the road that it's giving us. That's so, Let's be brave. Let's have love for this place. Let's have love for each other. You know, again, choosing this verse of God, George Chapman, we should all know this. Get a quote. And I was, I stunned with it because if I watch the recent OHA testimonies, I think, like, maybe six weeks ago, the Bobakia question was up. I mean, the young high school kids were not reading from the paper. They stay quoting them. Wow! You don't really know what you say. 
Because, yeah, 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 that is actually happened before, but it's better to believe the lie. That's the dirty water. They don't like us drinking out of this clean water. They want, they want us to pretend that we never drink this fresh, clean water. That we gotta keep on drinking this dirty water. <clears throat> but see, once you drink the fresh water, if you force the drink, I'm gonna drink the water out. I know it's dirty. I can't help myself. But the prejudice is based upon this idea of supremacy. That mine is sacred over yours. You go to mess with the, uh, you know, punch bowl down at those sacred sites. Yeah. Why barrels? I have school barrels in it, because they want. How about you? Ah, ride your bikes all over the mountain. Do this go, take a crap, dig it up, right on the mountain. You think they can do that same thing in the Arizona Memorial? Let's go national parks. And you foolishness enough to do this equality in all this? You think it's equality in all this? Oh, okay. Wake up! They treat us this way, first of all, because many of us accept it. And it's a dirty water. But after a while, enough of us will realize it's dirty water. We don't want this dirty water. And we will start to speak. So yes, they built 12 telescopes of Mount Idea before. But too much of us will suck in that dirty water. Yeah. The difference today, they way more guys, they want that clean water. Yeah. It's not our fault we're drinking the dirty water all this time. But now, we get to own for the fresh water. See, that's the point. The last of us is privilege. Look at the steps, sorry. <laughs> Which is like if somebody has privilege, they have power. How the heck is investors from India and Canada? Their investments are protected. And you have been here for 2,000 years. <laughs> Smile and take it. That's what you guys do for. Think about that dirty water. Think about that. Here's the easiest smile. I'm going to think about the future. We're better managers. How are you better managing the dehumanization of our people? How are you better managing to keep on that in our people? It don't matter what you think, Kanaka. It don't matter you've been here for 2,000 years, Kanaka. It don't matter you know you're the Kanaka. We're going to do what we want anyway. That's what they're doing. See, that's a sickness. I would never want to do unto him what he's been doing unto us. No. I can respect Pachmo. I can respect Arizona Memorial. I can no problems in that. All I ask is a human being, as a human being, then we get a body to be treated as human beings. That's simple. Mm. That's all it is. And to me, again, it's a very simple question. People get so complicated. It's simple. I human, you human. That's it. Mm -hmm. I did a talk a while back about this kind of fantasies of the master race versus Aloha Aina. And I'm the kind of person who's going to speak this language, you see. Because that's what it is. They believe that they're no better for us. They believe they know what's good for us. That we should give up all those. Yeah, 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 it's not true issue, but just pretend it never happened. Oh, yeah, it's sacred, but. But these Indian investors and Japan investors, they are taking it in first. See, the fantasy of course is assimilation, first of all, you say, you know, your culture and our culture are the same. You know, George Washington, that's really the part of your country. Assimilation is a process of them making us to be them. Create an image of us in their image. See, but once, once you know your own image, you see that's the point. Once I know my own image, you cannot fit me out anymore. But in the process of what's called dehumanization, most we say deculturation. If I teach you your culture is bad and I'm an evil, I give you a better one. Happens to be just like mine. <laughs> Look in the mirror and try to look at me. Learn my history, my language, my social way of being. See, deculturation is the process of taking on your culture, your history, your sense of being, your identity. It's like George Alvin said, 
we cried and overthrow when was in. Looking. We were raised this way. This is part of the indoctrination. And falsification of our consciousness. Robbing our kupuna of our own history. Our own stories, our own mythologies, our own spirituality. And implanting this image to make us believe their goals and our goals are one the same. Their ideas in democracy and life are the same. Land is real estate. I know. We can learn that word. See, transformation, for me, that's what it is. Not, when people talk about the reservation, it's not about the reservation of the land. I read about the reservations of your brain. As Mother Quite Buddhist Regine used to say, the chains on your brain. That's the chain. Don't worry about the one you did. There's no one in your brain you gotta worry about, first of all. Because if they can contain, put the chain on your brain and control how you think, what you think you need and who you are, what you'll be, they got us. What is, what is good? Thank you very much. After what you get used to the water, you get apathetic. That's how it's supposed to be. Oh, I am just hang on the beach. Drink, smoke, pack all day. That's how we do. You know, I used to go to the schools. Um, in fact, funny story, but you know, 20 something years ago, Keanu Sinai, that was our job. The university actually paid me and I to go to the schools and talk to my wife in the school. It was kind of funny. We look back today, kind of like, you know. And we would ask the same kind of questions. You know, who are we as a people? Our history as a people. And the good news is, our young people are waking up. Our young people didn't know. The young people are not afraid to speak. Whether dancing our songs, speak our language. Well, I understand Aloha Aina is at the core of our being. And we always thank those who walk in front of us. Who gave the life to us that today. You know, when I, when I got to my study, there only four majors. Two like about hundred something. You know, why is that? So just a fan before, not anymore. Because we understand indoctrination is something we all must fight against. Miseducation is a purposely, uh, is purposely done to make us into an image of some foreign mentality from Washington, D.C. 5,000 miles away! And we start to think and talk about ourselves that the mainland, the mainland is over there. Uh, no, the mainland is where? Right here. This is the mainland. This is the mainland. The great comedy K.H. asked us to say, you know, we're not just a couple of islands off the coast of California. But we get trained to think that way. We get trained to accept that way. We get trained to believe that that's it's good for us. That's the poison. But the bottom line is dehumanization to me is the key to make us believe that to be Hawaiian is less than. To make us believe somehow that when we speak the truth about our history, you know, you just some fringe people out there making up history. Now, let me tell you something. What's that panel once? With a professor. A history, a American history professor, you know, debating. And I turned to him and said, hey, you prove to me right now. Show me a treaty right now. I shot it forever. I don't say nothing. You win. But if you get a show the treaty, I win if you support us. His response was, oh, you know there's no real treaty. <laughs> <laughs> wait, you were a history professor. See, this is how confused. You lie so much, you don't even know when they're lying. That's the sickness. Aloha Aina, Oya Ego. See, that's the key. Is the truth. That's the key that we have. The Oya Ego is the key to all of this. Because they say, are we not a human being? Do not we have a language? Spirituality? A history here? Of course we do. That's the Oya Ego. Just 
had a couple more political stuff to kind of put all this in, in their perspective. In the community, a lot of times they get discussions, political talks, and you know, people are like, oh, we have to have, you know, we have this economic problem, we need economic development. I'm not opposed to it, I understand it. But see, the confusion is, is people think we have an economic problem. We don't. We have a political problem. We know Hawaiian Kingdom government in Crown Lands out there. It's not that the land, I mean, they're still out there, they never disappear. Oh, they stole Hawaiian lands! Think about that. You know, all the time. Oh, you know, this guy stole. Oh, yeah, they stole Hawaiian lands. Stick in the back pocket and walk away. The lands never went anywhere. It's a frame of mind. The lands are still there. It's your mind that got robbed.
That's the angel. But we get educated, mobilized. We get power. That's political power. And we'll demand changes. Let me just add one of my favorite kupuna. Peace on earth. That's our mama, Lilia Hale. Um, Associate officer. Uh, a beautiful woman. And uh, she worked with our kupuna at our uh, Hawaiian language department in Manoa. And whenever we did trips around the islands, we always had Mama Ali with us with students. But every morning, I would share an office with Mama Ali. Um, and every morning, she'd be working on her hala, and I'd be across the desk, and she'd give me that. What that meant was, she wanted her Pepsi. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know if her doctor knew, but I would go get my hair and her Pepsi. Sometimes, later on in the day, she'd give me like a second, which means she wanted her second one. But, and I had this conversation with Mama Ali once. And these Hawaiians were going at it. They were arguing. Some, some argument was going on. Mama Ali goes, You see, Kalikwa, you see our people. That's why we're smart. We're not sheep. See, what do you mean that? But even for her, having debate is part of who we are. That we're not sheep. And it's necessary for us to debate and talk. Sometimes they'll fight, perhaps. <laughs> but now when she started being choice, she saw how smart at people. Not sheep. I never forgot that. I never forgot her wisdom. And I keep on saying, you know, you, you bring back to culture and our people adapting and innovating as a people. If you go to Kalo, for example. And if I go and lose Maui, go to Hakaloa. You go to Waihe. Okay, and I. You think they can call all the same way? Different environment, different conditions, demand different kinds of techniques. Point B, we're not monolithic. We don't all do things the same way. But that's good. That's good. Kona may be different from Hilo. Maui may be different from Hilo or Kona. But it's the collective wisdom. It's collective wisdom of all of us. That's what you always say. Not one of us get the answer. Anybody tell you you get the answer? The bullshit. <laughs> but all of us together can find the answer. See, that's the point. All of us together can find the answer. Okay. So I'm going to end up. Uh, and then if anybody questions and stuff like that, but as you can see, I can keep on rolling and stuff. But okay. Any questions? <laughs>
So education, for example. Okay. Reading and writing. Let's look at that. It's yeah, So, I, you know, example, when I used to go to the schools, I, I, I forgot this story, the album, like that. And, you know, talking to these young Hawaiians back then, and they go, ah, reading and writing. That's all how this stuff. Let me learn reading and writing. trained to think that way. Because there was a time that my people didn't read it right. But in one generation, we became one of the most greatest readers and writers on this whole planet. 20 years. That was a tool that we picked up and be able to use for our purposes. So, you know, especially it's not like a clear kind of, you know, uh, hatchy job that you don't throw everything out. Because there's certain kinds of foods that they are good for us. Maybe do they eat kale? I don't know. Kale's not Hawaiian, but really good for our bodies and stuff. But uh, maybe double cheeseburgers. <laughs> oh no, once in a while not too bad. But, you know, we gotta figure those are things that we, we can incorporate. So, I don't think there's an easy question, but I, I, but I would say it's not so much the tools that were to me. If we live by those, the, the lessons I was trying to share, you know, that, that intelligence, that philosophy, to me, those are the keys. You know, loving this place first, putting this place first in front of us. Uh, not worrying so much about the back pocket first. But see, that's, that's not how we grow, that individual success is success. And we understand as a people that wasn't always the way. That was part of transformation to teach us to say, it's not about all of you, it's just about you. You know, I always quote the famous Muhammad Ali, his favorite and most famous poem, which is me, me. So when I say me, everybody say we. It's a very simple kind of way of, of looking at the world. But I agree, I, I, do mean that. I, don't, I don't think there's an easy answer. But I, I know this, the more we look at all these lessons from the past and understand it, the more clear it will be of the way we need to go. So I mean, for, for example, genetic modified foods, GMOs, that's one thing. Insecticides and pesticides and that kind of stuff on the land, that's a very big question. And so, but if I understand taking care of the land that which feeds us first, and I cannot help as a Hawaiian to question the amount and the use of pesticides in this land. If I don't, you see, then I'm already ignoring one of the fundamental core understandings of us as a people. The we are this place. This place is us. And so I've been mean, put along, you know, period to that whole thing. I don't think you'll the answer. But I think the answer is out there, especially if we as a people talk together and figure it out together. And we look to the past to inform us for our lessons today. How do we deliver our message to those? Oh, how do we deliver? Oh. Oh, and then say, after we give them our facts, our genealogy, our mo'olelo, and they say goodbye. Yeah, um, that's the million dollar question. It, it is because I <coughs> face that every day. Yeah, but I, I don't tell you this. I, my, I can say my own personal experience, there are many of those who one time were on the other side of the debate for me, who are now on this side. How do and you it's a, it? It's a process, it's a process. It's a process of Aloha, Aina, and Oye I don't know if we can get everyone, honestly. I mean, we're dealing with people with the pala pala of Princeton, Harvard, Cornell, I mean, these are those so-called science yeah. and astronomers. And we give them our mo'olelo, we give them our knowledge, and then they say, a'olelo. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, well, the next example, I will look at this, I will say, before, I, I'm not as worried about them, as much as I worry about us. <laughs> because if we don't get our shit together, right. <laughs> she don't matter. I guess I'm trying to say, if we, as the Lahu Ikanaka, people who live here, Aloha Aina who live here, we don't have a common bond. See, on a kill, 
If we had 5,000 people up there, no. You see, TMT will be gone that quick. Are we able? No, but if I, this is my point, I say. So, the point for, see, my thing is that, I want to put all this energy to go teach the guys over there to, you know, see me as a human being, yeah. as much as I want to ask over here to see ourselves as beings first. Like, yeah. if I get 5,000 guys up there, we shut it down. Yo. It don't matter what the guy in Harvard thinks anymore. That's the key. You get 10,000 people out there, oh, the rest of the other are coming out. <laughs> so now, the point being, the Puliana is real for us. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not, I'm not, I'm not exactly what you're saying. I mean, that is a difficulty because, man, you get so much energy sometimes trying to think in you. And you cannot run and you're running. How the heck these guys cannot see us as human beings? Yes. But part of the problem, many of our own people still yeah. fail to see us as human beings. No. So that's, that, and that's our responsibility within our own households, our neighbors. And even then, I mean, it's not easy. I mean, all of us want to work in the company. It's not easy. It's hard work. But I can tell you this, man. I know how things were 25 years ago, 20 years ago. Then, boy, things have changed big time. Huge. Huge. In regards to the, 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 the not just the, the in, intellectual understanding of our people today, but even just the spiritual idea of our people. I mean, when, you know, I remember when that DUI hearings came out last year. Oh, I was so excited! Because it was, was the first time I seen in a long time. We're like, whoa! Man, they couldn't contain us, guys! See, when the DUI guys came, they thought they were going to two weeks notice, they were sneaking in and da 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 You know, they a couple of radicals say this and this, and they would come through, run away, and do what they were going to do. They were in black. But when they came down, from the first day at the Capitol, Holy smokes! The people came on and just bang, 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 bang. And everywhere they went was the same story. And I remember seeing that and I said, whoa, there's a new consciousness in our community. Voices that were never heard 10 years ago, 5 years ago, 2 years ago. And the voices are getting louder. The voices are getting more intelligent. You know, the voices are getting more clear. And the example, as they said that Oga meeting uh, six weeks ago, four weeks ago, when I see this young guys testifying, whoa! These high school kids quoting stuff. So there's definitely there's a huge change. There's something that's going on in the community. And that's my hope. I mean, that's why I'm here. That's why I think all of us are here. Yeah. This is coming to all of us here. You know, that we're going to continue to grow. We're going to continue to grow. Aloha, Aina, Oya Ego. You know, we don't need to threaten anybody physically. I don't need to make a propaganda. I don't need to make some fancy ad in a paper. Slick ad. You know, this is the Oha paper. Remember the Kanai Lovalo? The point is that. No sign up. You risk forever giving up your right as a Hawaiian. That was it. What kind of craziness is that? But that's, they're trying to scare you, you see. See, to me, that's, that's the difference, is that we don't need to scare anybody. The truth is so powerful. Yeah. The truth is so powerful, you cannot deny the power of the truth. Yeah. And for some people, sometimes it's a hard time for them to see the truth. But they're so used to taking from this dirty glass. <laughs> they don't want to give them up. They've trained themselves to think that the dirty glass is good for them. And so part of it is revealing to them that the glass is dirty. Or really better, we need to get actually clean glass water over here. But that is our responsibility, all of us here. All of us here. <coughs> you know, and I, but, I, but I would say, I think that's a responsibility that one of us are doing anyway. It is beautiful to see what's going on out there. You know, so even in Mauna Kea, what's happening in Mauna Kea to me is really uh, the pinnacle at this point regards to the kind of voices that you see going on out there. You know, Hawaii's understand that we have a power. So you know what you are a bow out there. And I'm, yeah, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking, schools, looking, all the years, I'm just like getting ready. Because we're coming. No longer we're going to stand on the side and just say, only this much people can serve. We're not going to stand and look at our so-called Hawaiian crown and government land and stand on the side and watch it get leased out. We're coming. We'll be planting. See, and to me, they know this. They know Mount Akia to them is a huge issue they gotta deal with. Yeah. To think that they've been talking about bringing out the national guard on our people. And I say, bring them out! No. You wanna reveal the occupation? Bring it out! No. You think it's gonna make our skin? It ain't. No. You know, Gandhi, be brave! Right. Remember! You know, Gandhi, but you got something wrong. Truth force, love force, that's the most powerful force, it's truth and love. That's the most powerful, okay, okay, well, that's what, same mentality, truth and love. That's all I need. So I'm going to reveal 
justify your desires for over humanity. You know the stories I always tell with regards to Hale Kala. I said right across Craig Fultz, the National Science Foundation. And we asked him, I asked him the record, you know, the ATST, the solar class will tell me what is the like, you know, it's taking in our culture, life is the most sacred thing. Life is the most sacred thing. Life is. That if you're talking about saving lives and feeding people, you know, I can at least entertain that I can understand. That's how I I can suffer. If I know you can save lives. I'll suffer, speaking of myself, but I think that's an ideal we all know as human beings. So I ask him, what is the humanity as Gandhi said? The seven scenes, science without humanity. Tell me the humanity. And when he says, uh, just pure selfish research. <laughs> Want to choke his neck or whatever else? Meaning, huh? Yeah, yeah, he's painful to your mind, but I gotta do my pure selfish research. But the bottom line is, I know, we're here. It don't matter what you say. That's right. The sickness that's in here, right. you know, it, it doesn't matter. So yes, I can I can speak to him and I can say which we need to do. But it's most important for us, for you guys to hear the message of what he said. Because you can understand clearly, man and these guys really don't give a damn what happens to our people. They don't. They care about what happens to their pocketbook. But we cannot worry about that first of all. We gotta worry about us. All we can control is us. We can control our destiny. I cannot control his destiny. But I know I can help to control our destiny together. So that's where the answer lies. That's all of us together. You know, and I go back to those words that I tried to share about Mokai. Yeah. In talk. Yeah. Aloha Aino Waiko is a very easy word, I mean, concept to understand in talk. Yeah. We're from this place, and when we go back, we go back down into this place. All of us who live here. That's why I say, whether you're a long-haired Hawaiian, brown-haired Hawaiian, or the no-haired Hawaiian, <laughs> but a non-Hawaiian Bolivian, your ashes and ashes, dust to dust, is all end up in the same place too. Your kids will marry my kids and grandkids, and we all end up here too. So in the end, it's really a vision for all of us. That if you really truly love this place, it is a couple. It's very simple. It is a couple. That's the best guy in my life. Oh, please. <laughs> I should have asked this for Dr. Lynette Cruz. Um, okay. Recently, you noticed the Kukuna signs that the Kalei Miley Elite Civic Club, which is mostly in Oahu, have the signs have come back to uh, Moku Keabe. And she has kind of been the key, one of the keepers. And she said, that she felt very strongly that they wanted to come home. And the reception was going with the names and the signs, and it was really great. And I'm just wondering, in your opinion, why do you suppose the people they have chosen to come home at this time? Mike, 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 we can't suppose. Our people are finding ready. I mean, if they brought those names of Kupuna to you 20 years ago, I don't know if many of us would hear who would have seen the message. But I think today, and you know, I remember going back to 1998 when they first were brought back, and you had people with not one care about those Golden Hawaiian issues. Go up to the bar and they see the Kupuna's name signed. Protest forever, annotation. They cried. That's how powerful. When they cry for the first time and they realize all the BS that has been put up to our people all this time. BS <clears throat> confused us for such a long time to accept again drinking out this dirty water. But once they saw that truth, one name on their list, the forever were changed to understand, hey, something's wrong with this water I've been drinking. <clears throat> so I get my, my quick answer, I, I think it's part, I think it's the reason it's so important today is because our people see it as something so important today. I think it's because we're ready to see that we find it more hungry enough. And so, you know, when I look at you, like the petitions, you know, I get that confusion. People get this idea, oh, I wonder what the minds are thinking back at the overthrow. And... When you realize almost unanimously 
I, I, I truly believe that. I'm not saying they, you know, they just going to, yeah, you guys talk and walk away. I don't, I don't think it's going to be easy. I never believe it's going to be easy. Anybody tell you it's easy? They bullshit. I tell you right now. Sign your name here, you get, it's never going to happen that way. It has never happened that way in history. You know, the great Frederick Douglass says, there's no struggle, there's no progress. Yeah. If the young people did not go and stand around the kid, those who got arrested around the kid, they're dead. This special wouldn't even be going on today. So the great, um, great French philosopher Foucault, <laughs> he has this saying basically, I don't speak French, so we'll give you the Hawaiian uh, translation to his, his stuff, but it goes in the sense of saying, we all know what one does, but we never know what one does, does. <laughs> it's not that. Right? We all know what one does. But we don't know what one does. Does. We all don't know what one does. But we know what one does. Does. You see, that's the point. You make the stand. Give me one person. Make, I'm going to last of all item. That one stand, you never know what it's going to do. The main point, as uh, Uncle Rene Silva used to say, from Maui, he's something he's passed on, and he was one of the great self-trained uh, Hawaiian botanist, no botanist. And he used to talk about trying to revive my plants, and he started to say, he said, you know, well, better you try something, because you know what happens when you do nothing. <laughs> nothing! <laughs> yeah. Yesterday, it was yesterday, the two, the two young guys who were training themselves to the... So the first thing, they was talking to my cousin, why the hell do you train yourself to the statue for? You train yourself to something. That's the point. You never know what one does will do. I can't imagine the young boys are doing all this kind of stuff all over the place. Oh! When the kid goes down, Hayaka is going up, Mohi is going up. Whoa! Wakulo is going up. Whoa! People are getting nervous. That's, that's what they're afraid of. The question is, this is a question, this is a hard question. Are we, do we have enough aloha in all of us? Do we have the commitment of all of us to do what is necessary for the future? That's the question. That's a heavy question. Because some of us may have to give up certain things. But that's the question. Is it going to happen now or future generations? If we give up now, will the future generations even have that opportunity? I know the chance is here now. I know the opportunity is here right now, right now, right now. Right now. The question right now. Forget about later on. We are worried. Oh, I'm talking now. You know, we stand now. But I don't even know if we have a chance to stand again. That's all I believe. But I know that we can call Kai and all the gang. We put all the gang up there. And I know I will stand again. I just hope you all can stand whatever way it might be. See, it doesn't mean you have to be in Mount Akea. See, Aloha is all over the place. Yeah. Everywhere is Aloha. Yeah. Truth? Truth. Love for this place. And to me, that's, that's I mean, that's why I say it's a very simple question. Are we down for the future of our, our, our children? Or are we just going to simulate? If you excel, make sure you sell out a lot of money. You don't want to be a cheap hooker, you like to be an expensive one. <laughs> if you don't sell, sell high! <laughs> <laughs> That's the question. So high, Me, I'm not going to sell. Until when? Last how high it is. What is it? They gave us the message. You know, so I, 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 I come this night, I sold Maui, we get all this. Maui's all excited. What are you going to do? I let flyers out there. You know, I mean, Hanukkah, so we've been dealing with some heavy stuff. Hanukkah, I mean, you're talking about the largest Department of Defense telescope is on Hanukkah. The Maui Space Surveillance Center. Every man thing in the sky is being trapped on Hanukkah. And those satellites, what do they trap? They trap us! <laughs> <laughs> so they trap the things, they trap us! That's a Maui! So, it ain't going to be easy. You know, a 
know that it was always saying that the words, yeah, you know, the strongest swimmers swim in the rocky seas. We might swim in the shallow pond. I could work. You think I could put no words like that? They were the deepest and the farthest. That's us. So if anybody's world could take on the most powerful military machine, it's us. Yeah. It's us. I believe that. You know, the other day we hit me. If you don't believe it, get out of the way. You don't have time to play. I don't have time to play. Uh, and so this is, that, this is the truth. You, you gotta see this is the truth. And if you cannot do, you help those who can. If you cannot go, help the one that can go. It's just as important. It's just as necessary. That's why I say everybody has a role in it. Hey, you get 25 cents? 25 cents. Bunch of bananas? Bunch of bananas. We all can support. And that's my thing because it's going to have to be a taco thing. Yeah. Not some of us think. You know, you know what, what the story is always saying, you know, Hawaii activists. So yeah, I'm an active Hawaii. <laughs> you either be you active or you're active. That's simple. It's <laughs> active. That's simple. There's nothing wrong being active. Are you sleeping or you're awake? Yeah. Some of us are so afraid they close their eyes. That's all right. You know, you sing a good lullaby, you become happy, wake them up. But that's the truth, it's so powerful. They say, brother, put his hand on his boots. Um, part of our job, I assume, after this meeting, is to go out and help our own people. Not to drink for dirty water. So, uh, recently the DOI came, they gave us three proposals, state, federal, other choice international which water is the better water for all of us to drink from together I, I, I think you just gave part of the answer you see I myself I may have an opinion and I think it's pretty important <laughs> but I think all of our opinion together in other words we have to have a way in which a process in which all of our opinions are put together that's the problem I think sometimes with this idea, one person or two persons, they get, they get the answer. And I've been always saying this, okay, I, don't, I don't believe that. I believe we all have the answer. But to get the answers, you gotta listen, you gotta learn. You gotta pay attention, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta analyze the situation. Now, analyzing is also important now, you know, Kwame Dury, Smokey Carmichael, you know, peace of him too. You know, all the things I, I mean, I, all the greatest nights I got to sit with him listening and talking and met him and, and um, I remember he saying these words, you know, you can never analyze the oppressed without in the analysis bringing in the role of the oppressor and the effects of oppression because if you don't, you start blaming the oppressed for your own condition in other words if you look at the Hawaiian situation and say, oh, this Hawaiian, they don't like education. That's what you hear. But if you analyze the situation of Hawaiians in regards to so called education, and you don't take into effect the question of occupation or the history of our situation, you start to believe that Hawaiians have always been in this condition. Is that true? True. There was a time, in fact, of course. But we were as educated in any other place in the world. Right, right. But we became miseducated. So I said, if we don't take into account the role of the oppressor <coughs> and the effects of oppression. So to say, I'm going to go back to the question. So part of the journey, not just to talk about door number one, door number two, door number three. But we gotta gotta analyze, even amongst ourselves first, you know, not so much the choices of the doors. I was telling people, you know. You should come to the point where it's not even a choice. That's why I look at it. It should be so obvious that you shouldn't be going, like, let's make a deal, door number one, door number two. Don't be that's kind of foolishness. That, that's it. That's why the deal I hear is to be kind of exposed to that foolishness. I have always said, nation building will never come from free t-shirts and sign your name. Nation building comes from struggle. 
Ain't she gonna put up a mother care right now? So when they do all that, baby here, I'm not gonna be baby of the support. I know, I put trustees. But they gave money, $2.9 million going to some group called Nai Al Kuni. Five members of, we don't even know who the hell they are. That's the truth. To put, not even 25 cents, they go to Mount Lakia. What is their purpose? Nation building. I need to mind on a dirt purpose, this is the same. This dirty water is good for you, boy. We've been drinking them all this time, see? But $2.9 million is going to it. I mean, that's my point. And that, they're talking nation building there. I mean, just understand this. Nation building is happening. Nation building is to struggle. Nation building is to have a common goal. Not for getting our free t-shirt inside the name. Who wants to belong to a nation with a signing name on a free t-shirt? I don't want to be part of that nation. It's not a pretty foolish nation. I don't know any great people that got together for this thing on a free t-shirt. But I know a lot of great people that got together for struggling. That I know for sure. So yeah, they're going to play the game. They're going to do their things. They're going to do that 2.9 million thing. And you're going to have those who drink the dirty water who think that's the best we can get. So part of the struggles, see my point, part of the struggles, ask Zach Kuliana. Yeah. It's like you are hearing, we're going to have to face off with those guys. we got to tell the truth. we got to demand the truth. You know, we, again, go back to Mama Hart, that's what she said. It doesn't mean what's going on, I'm not going to say nothing. It's like, again, we're going on this, we're going on this journey in this canoe, and somebody will just choose these navigators and chew on this canoe and tell me, hey, everybody, get out of the canoe, let's go. Me, I don't want to make a do. I like make sure that's the best navigators we get. I like to make sure they know where they're going. They have a safety plan of what's going on with these guys. But that's what always asks us to do right now. We have faith and trust. Five people who supposedly, whatever they're doing. But you see, one of the other things that Tommy Curry says, when they're doing something to you, you know you must be doing something, right? Yeah. This thing was, as he said, I'd be worried if they're not doing anything. Because if they're not doing nothing, that means that you're not doing nothing. See, this is reaction. That's they're reacting to what's going on in the community. Yeah. They know the community is bad. They can quote the all. So what they gonna do? They're gonna create some kind of you know confused uh, situation to hope there's more confusion. But me, I'm confident. I know when those guys, I don't know how I can speak for Maui. These guys come out tomorrow and they leave it. It's guaranteed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not making it like this. Yeah, guaranteed. Yeah, yeah. Guaranteed. I've seen it happen many, many times. So I said, bring it on. <laughs> bring it on. More we're going to expose how foolishness the trustees are with a $2.9 million into a process, a meaningless process. You can only give 25 cents to those who are all I said, do put that, would that be good bill money? No. <laughs> From Bill Trust Fund, do put that in the door, I want to do it. That's what she's building. No, yeah, keep on going, get arrested, do put that. But that's the kind of thing, that's why I said it's a political question, not an economic one. Yeah. So, Sorry. So, how do you bring the people from Ola as well as the academics that you raise? Are not on the same boat with us, but they're part of our. Yeah, that's, that is another important question. I mean, those of us who, I mean, uh, I've testified how many times on the but you know. All I can say is, Oma in their ad said, I can go back to that, if you don't sign up, you risk losing forever on the right of your kids. I know that's the wrong approach. So maybe I went 10 times last year. Maybe I'll go 20 more times, maybe 40 more times, and I'm not going to give up on it. It's frustrating, it's hard, the water is rough. I mean, we can try saving them. Maybe we can, maybe we cannot. But I know this I'm not going to give up on them like they gave up on us. No. That's what I was saying. That's a hard thing to do sometimes because it's frustrating. 
But I know I, I, I know I can in my heart. You know, I, uh, I love all of them. And they know, I mean, I, you know, the ex-ex, uh, uh, you know, chair of the board, I see they have lunch. I love her as a person, you know, and I, I think I'm using Gandhi again. The lesson of Gandhi, you know, Gandhi, when, when he was fighting the British, he used to go out and have tea with all the top British brass. And the Indians, he was pissed, what the hell are you doing eating with those guys? And Gandhi was, I'm going to convince them one day that they should live, they should leave India. That's what he did. Truth was, he's so powerful.
truth is it did work. It did help to stop the annexation. That's why there is no annexation. I'm not saying these guys are not here. They're here. But they're not here lawfully. They're not here legally. They're not here with our consent. They're not here with any legal authority or jurisdiction. But they're here. But to get to point to the point of what? For me, I get no problem. I say, you know, myself and I would hope every one of you, if you have never read, at least read what's beside, you should read it. And I can say, everyone should have a copy of that in their own household. And should understand. You get no confusion what you could put a thought. Yeah. And if you knew you could put, could put a believe it that way, there's no reason why you should believe it today. And I mean, go back to the trustee, the rest of the day. Would you guys be afraid to sign the petitions yourselves? Also, I've never read it before. Get the dirty water. They don't even know get the clean water. See, that's whose responsibility is that? Us. It's us. I don't know how to fossil for real, but we gotta figure it out. Yeah, but that's hard to put on the internet. As a howling who wants to be a solid ally, um, what does a solid ally look like? Good question. Uh, yeah. Um, but number one, of course, is get as informed as you can, educated. I will say be honest as much as you can. To me, as honest is the key. I, I don't want, I would never want you to tell me what I want to hear. I always want you to be as honest as you can in the conversation with me. Because if you're honest, then I know how we can be honest with one another and find a solution. You see, that's the, that's the part I think you confused. I think sometimes our own people get into it. Huh? You see that? Boom, 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 boom. No. Who of us see is perfect? Huh? Who perfect about everything here? Not I. For saying something perhaps that is not correct. See, that's my point. If the person is honest and true, I gotta accept that being honest and true. And in the conversation, perhaps, in the conversation, perhaps, the person is gonna appreciate my view, and maybe I'll learn to appreciate your view. But in that, in that, the, 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 I think what's what's the most difficult part for the howling boys, especially, is to first acknowledge in history privilege. There's a certain privilege that came along with the overthrow. There's a certain kind of empowerment that came with the overthrow. Yeah. So they kind of empowered, they went on because of it. You know, and, and once you understand that, then you understand you, as a person in privilege, you have the choice to, you know, you may not be able to disavow that privilege, but at least you can recognize that privilege, share that privilege. You know, uh, and he went using the great Malcolm X again. As the story goes, you know, I think he's going to talk at Harvard or, or uh, one of those fancy schools in, I don't know, maybe it was in Europe. And a young white uh, girl comes up to him and says, you know, what can I do? And he read in the autograph, he said, nothing. Tells him nothing. And then later on, when he's doing his autobiography, he reflects on that. And he says, Oh, there's a lot she could have I could have told her to speak to her people. I could have told her to inform her people, to educate her people. Meaning that that's their kuliyana to do also. Just to take whatever you can hear of this story and share with them as much as you can. Um, because, you know, um, humanity is who's kuliyana. All of us. All of us. Humanity belongs to all of us. Not just to the Hawaiians. The Hawaiian question isn't just for the Hawaiians. It's the Hawaiian question for all of us. Recognize us as, as a people. It belongs to all of all humans. So they, we all have Kuliana in this question anyway. Our roles may be different as Kuliana. But it's still something that we all share as this human being. Okay, good.
Halo, 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 Halo,